Hi, I'm Jane and welcome back. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at how to record the sound of your digital piano or music keyboard on your computer. Now a while back I posted a whole series of videos on how to record your keyboard and how to make a MIDI connection too and they were hugely popular. I've had loads of feedback and lots of you said how helpful you found all that content. But I've also had lots of questions I know that some of you are still confused about which are the right cables to use, what to do if you don't have any line out on your keyboard, what's the best kind of interface, still some confusion about the difference between recording the sound or the audio and MIDI. So this is a brand new updated guide on how to record the actual sound of your keyboard or digital piano in any recording software. We'll have a quick look at Audacity, GarageBand and Reaper to show you that once you've got the hardware right, you'll be able to use any audio production software or door to make the recording. I'm also going to have a quick look at using a portable digital recorder as an alternative to an audio interface. Quite a few things to cover, so let's do this. Right, so what I'm going to do quickly is look at the essential kit you're going to need and also a few common confusions. So let's remind ourselves what the aim is. We want to record the sound of our keyboard or digital piano on our laptop, computer or iPad. Back in the day, computers used to have line inputs on them and so it was possible to take a line out from a keyboard or something and record it directly on your computer. It wasn't the greatest quality, but you could do it. Nowadays, most laptops just don't have the right kind of port to do this. So you can't connect your keyboard right up to your computer. You're going to need some sort of equipment. The keyboard I'm going to show you how to do this with, you can connect it up to your computer using a USB lead and or Bluetooth. But the thing is, both those kinds of connections are only MIDI connections. So you can't record the sound of your keyboard this way. Now I have got elsewhere a video that explains in detail the difference between MIDI and audio if you're not sure, but basically, usually when you've got a USB lead or Bluetooth from your computer, it is not there to help you record the sound of your keyboard, it's to make the MIDI connection. So here is the basic kit you're going to need. You're going to need a keyboard that makes a sound. You're going to need some kind of interface that acts as the middleman between your keyboard and your computer. You're going to need the right cable to connect your keyboard up to the interface. And we'll have a look at in detail at cables in a bit. And you're also going to need some kind of recording software. The other equipment you're going to need because you're now going to be listening to your keyboard through your interface is a set of headphones and or studio monitors so that you can hear the sound of your keyboard coming out of the interface. What sort of interface do you need? Well, interfaces come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You need one that will work with your computer or iPad or phone. So buy the appropriate one, but make sure it has line inputs if you want to record the sound of your keyboard. We've got Got one here that takes RCA inputs, but they're still line inputs. This uh, Focusrite has dual inputs that will take a quarter inch jack or XLR inputs. So that has got the ability to take line inputs and so does the Duo similar sort of thing with combo inputs. Now we're going to have a quick look at the alternative to an interface, which is the portable digital recorder. You could, if you're miles away from your computer, record your keyboard directly into a digital recorder and then transfer the file afterwards. And this one actually doubles up as an interface as well. So it's like got two ways you could use it. Now then, this is the source of multiple confusions. Which cable are you going to need? Now, obviously cables come in all shapes and sizes. And so I often get people saying, well, I've got this kind of keyboard and that kind of interface. What cable do I need? Well, this, it isn't the same answer every time. It depends. Basically, a cable has two ends. So you need to look at the outputs of your keyboard and the inputs of your interface and get the appropriate cable that will connect the two things together. Now I'm going to look at a keyboard that doesn't actually have any line outputs as such. It's only got a headphone output. And this is one of the most common questions I get. Well, I've only got headphone output. What do I do? I'll show you. And if you want more detail about audio cables and connectors, the difference between MIDI and audio, and also um, what is an audio interface, more detail you can find. I've got other videos and I'll put links to them below. So let's have a look at how it's done step by step. Here we have my keyboard all set up. 
and also the audio interface ready to record. So let's flip the keyboard round and have a look at what's on the back of it. So if we look up close, you can see we've got an aux in, so we could connect some sort of external player into this to play along with along the speakers, but that's going to be no good for recording because it's an input. The only output we've got other than this USB output, which as I've said is to connect, to make a MIDI connection, we've got the phone's stroke output. Phone stroke output, so that is the only place that sound is going to be coming out of this keyboard and that is what we need to connect up to the interface. So let's have a look at the cable I'm going to use. Okay, now this is a Y cable and this is where I was saying you've got to look at the two different ends of the cable and the two things you're trying to connect. So this is a 3.5 millimeter output so and it's TRS it's stereo so I'm going to need um, one end of my cable to look like that and then here's my audio interface and it has two quarter inch inputs set to line input here and I've got the faders turned right down on this interface when I start to do this so if I just um, play again so there's my keyboard ready to make a sound now if I connect the output there like that what will happen now is obviously you can't hear anything because this silences the speakers come to what you do about that in a minute but here we have my two outputs so this is a stereo output being split into left and right and so I will plug the two cables into the interface like that so that's all I need to do look at where the sound is coming out of my keyboard Look at the inputs on my interface, make sure they're switched to line, make sure I've got the right connectors, connect it up. As I said earlier, the exact cables that you will need will depend on the outputs of your keyboard. So if you have quarter inch jacks, you'll want quarter inch jack cables. If you've got balanced XLR outputs as here, then you'll want XLR to TRS, assuming that your interface has balanced inputs. Check the manuals for your interface and your keyboard, look on the back and buy the cables that will connect your outputs to your inputs accordingly. So that's the bit where it's all connected up. Let's move on to the next stage. So what I've got here is I have got the interface with the audio inputs going into the line inputs. I have played with the faders on both the keyboard and on the interface to make sure that um, I'm happy with the levels. And I have connected headphones to the headphone output. And I've also got um, the outputs at the back connected to my studio monitors. And so now I've got the direct monitor set up so that I can hear it. I've set it onto stereo and I have got the uh, knob here pointed right over to the input so I can hear everything that's coming directly out of the interface. So the input is going into the interface and I'm going to hear it directly without it going routed through my computer. So if I now play something on the piano, you can hear that because it's coming out of the speakers directly through this. So that is how you hear the sound of your keyboard once you have got it connected up. Now I have got the monitors on, but what I could do is turn the monitors right down and um, just listen to my headphones. So if I do that again, you can hear that um, the sound coming out the headphones. So I can choose to hear it through both, just the monitors, just the headphones. And that's how I hear the sound of the keyboard. So now I'm going to go and have a look on my computer how we're going to go about recording the actual sound in various bits of software. We've done the hard bit. Right, so the first recording I'm going to make, I'm going to use Audacity, which is arguably the easiest recording software to use. And so the way I've got it set up is I have already checked the levels of my piano. Now you have to check the levels in two places. You can, well, you can adjust them in two places. You've got the volume, on your keyboard or piano and you've also got the faders 
on the inputs on the interface. And so there's two places where you can adjust the levels. And it's important to play around with these to get a really good signal to noise ratio so that you can get as much signal as possible with minimum noise and the highest level you can get without clipping or digital distortion. You're aiming for a maximum of a minus 6 dB to be to give yourself plenty of headroom but get a good quality signal. So if I just click here to start monitoring and just play a few notes you can see I've got a good level it sounds okay. Right so I have got the software set up so that I'm using my audio interface as the input. Now normally you would set your audio interface as your output as well like that. The only reason I'm not and I'm using this multi output device is so that you can hear what I'm doing in my screen recording software. And I've got it already set up to record a stereo file so literally to record in Audacity all I need to do is hit this record button it'll start recording I'm going to cheat and play one of the demo tracks on my keyboard because it'll sound better than if I try and play something. Um, but you'll get the drift of it streaming the audio into the software. So here goes. So you heard a little click at the beginning. That's just where I'm pressing the play button on the keyboard and it's transmitting a little click. So let's get rid of that. I'll just select that bit there and delete it. And now let's play back. So there you go, a simple recording of your keyboard with good quality signal in Audacity. Next up, let's have a look at GarageBand. Now, when you start an empty project in GarageBand or a new project, you get asked what kind of track type that you want to create, or if later on you're adding tracks, you can choose what kind of track you make. Um, you can create drum tracks and software instrument tracks, but the kind of track we want to make is an audio track and the one we want to pick is this one. Although it's got a picture of a microphone, it says record using a microphone or line input. So that's what we're doing. So we'll take that. Now, just before we carry on, let's have a look here. Um, it's going to record on inputs one and two. Those are the inputs on my audio interface because it's already said my instrument is connected with the Scarlett 2i4. Now, if this was wrong or you wanted to change it, you just click this arrow here and you can adjust the devices here. Now obviously again you would use your audio interface as the output so let's create that first track. So it's all ready now all I need to do is arm this track for recording so what I need to do is um, right click on this track and configure the track header because it's not showing me the record enable so let's do that. Okay and now let's go back onto this track and I will arm it for recording. Okay, so we're all ready to record and again the levels are already all set. Oh, I've got the metronome on. I don't want that. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, let's go. So for some reason, when you're monitoring, it kind of like just has one waveform, but actually it is recording in stereo. There's our stereo file. So let's just wind back a bit. Again, I'd like to get rid of this bit. Just bring that in like that. That's all you need to do. And then you can move the file along. OK, so let's start playing. Let's take off the armed for recording. OK, so that is recording your keyboard in GarageBand. So finally, let's have a look in Reaper. Open up the preferences and make sure that you're on the audio device and check that you've got your audio interface selected.
Double click to create a track and then just make sure that you select the stereo inputs, arm it for recording and as soon as you hit the record button it'll start recording. Press the play on the keyboard and start playing. A bit of static was actually the screen recording software not the recording I've got in Reaper. So you save the file that you've created, untick the arm for recording, trim the file just like in GarageBand, move it, let's play it. And that is recording in Reaper. As you can see, the principle is pretty much the same in all the recording software. Now I'm going to have a quick look at how we could record the sound of our keyboard using a portable digital recorder instead of an audio interface. Now, as I said before, the beauty of this is that it means you can separate the recording process from turning on your computer. So you could take this portable digital recorder anywhere, anywhere you took your keyboard, make digital recordings and then transfer them into your recording software. So let's go through the process of what you do. Now, first of all, I should point out that I've got a headphone splitter here. So I am splitting the output from the keyboard to my headphones on one side and to the audio cable on the other. Now, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can just hear the keyboard um, when I'm playing. OK, so that's that done. Now, all I need to do now is connect the other end of the cable into the inputs one and two on the recorder, which I've already done. As you can see, they're exactly the same sort of inputs as I had on the audio interface. So you could connect XLR leads to this, but these quarter inch jacks will fit in like that. So I've got left and right there. And so all I need to do now is press the record button here to arm it for recording and see what the levels are like. And as you can see, they are far too high because I'm getting it's going right up to peaking there. So I'll turn this down. And from playing earlier, I think it about 60 is about right for this, because remember, there's quite a high volume coming out of there. And so that look that is peaking at around minus 6 dB. OK, so now all I need to do, I'm armed for recording, is start the recording process and press play. And as you can see, it's actually picking up the signal like that and creating an audio file on there. And you can just about hear the sound coming out of the headphones. OK, so when I'm done, stop that, stop that. And I've got my file in there. And as I say, I can, using the USB output on here, I can use this as an audio interface or I can use it as an external drive and simply transfer that file into any recording software. So very quickly now, I'm just going to show you how easy it is to get the files off the Zoom. I've connected it up and chosen to see it as an external storage device. So it's showing up here in my finder. And when I look in there, this is the folders on the recorder. This is where all the files get stored. And if I look at the files that I've created today, there's the file that I have most recently recorded. So I've already transferred it across and renamed it. Now I'm going to go to Audacity and I'm going to go File, Import Audio. And here is that very file. And if I just start playing. That is the recording I just made on the Zoom recorder and I've just simply transferred it in. Very simple. Finally, to record on your iPad, you can either use an audio interface specifically designed for iPad or smartphone that has got line inputs, or you can use an ordinary USB interface with a powered camera adapter like this. Then you can record in any recording app on your iPad. 
Well, I hope you found that useful. If you still have any questions or comments, then as usual, post them below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of my home recording tips and tricks. Well, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.